Hello everybody, Hooded Cobra Commander 788 here, and it is time to open this boxed vintage G.I. Joe Cobra Sea Ray, which was sent to me by Mike Lopez. Thank you very much, Mike. This was incredibly kind of you. Uh, and Mike sent it to me for the purpose of opening it and assembling it, and that's what we're going to do. Now, I understand that you guys who like to keep your toys mint in sealed box might be triggered. So, trigger warning, you might not want to watch this video. So, I just, oh my God, I cannot believe it. Cannot believe it. Actually going to open this, actually, I already opened the box. Yeah, I already opened this box uh, for a specific reason. Um, I had reasons to suspect that this box had been opened before and resealed. And uh, after I opened it, I confirmed that. Uh, this box at some point uh, had been open. Uh, the reason that I know uh, is because uh, some of the vintage tape, that stringy tape that they used to use on the boxes, that was folded under and there was some clear tape over it that was definitely not vintage. Um, and once I opened the box, uh, first of all, everything is here. Uh, everything that's supposed to be sealed in a factory bag is still sealed. That's cool. Uh, but I did notice that uh, there were like little cobwebs on some of the parts uh, in the box and also one of the parts is uh, significantly discolored. Now I'm t just informing you of this so you know what you're going to see today. I'm not complaining. Uh, Mike's gift was extremely generous and I'm very happy to receive it and I'm thrilled to open this. This is something I didn't have. Uh, this will fill a spot uh, in the collection. Uh, it will be reviewed in the future. Uh, there is one part that I will replace because it is somewhat discolored. Uh, you'll see what I mean when I open this up and put it together. Uh, but I just wanted to let you know and again, M Mike, thank you very much. Absolutely not complaining about this. I am going to love putting this together uh, and I'm going to show it to you. And uh, the figure is still sealed, uh, so uh, nobody's touched the figure. But with that explanation out of the way, let's open this up and put it together. Okay, I have the tools I will likely need to assemble this vehicle. Uh, so let's open it up, take it out, and put it together. I'm going to open it here from the end that's already opened. Uh, the other end is still sealed with that factory tape. I'm going to take out the uh, main parts of the body first, uh, which are just kind of loose in the box. Then I'm going to take out, we've got some paperwork, the ephemera here. Uh, there are the blueprints and instruction sheet, which we will follow. Uh, the uh, Live the Adventure. Um, uh, this is kind of fun, Operation Space Station. I wanna, don't want to spend too much time on these, uh, but um, these were kind of fun, cool things that you always got with the vehicles. Uh, and then uh, the catalog for that year. This is the 1987 catalog uh, with all of the figures and vehicles that were out that year. Um, so uh, set that stuff aside. We will need the instruction sheet, so let me go ahead and unfold that, get it opened up. There we go. Uh, and now let's finish taking the rest of it out. Uh, there is the um, the canopy that is sealed in the bag. Here are all the other parts, missiles and whatnot, and the sticker sheet all still sealed. Um, and now we got to take the figure out, and the figure is on a kind of a cardboard. Yeah, there we go. There we go. The cardboard insert. So that is everything. So I'm going to set this, the box aside so it doesn't get in our way. It's a cool box though, some of that nice vintage 80s G.I. Joe box art. Very, very nice. Um, and um, I'm going to save the figure actually probably for last, uh, so I'll set the figure aside for now as well. And uh, let's start with step number one. Step number one A says turn pod top. Where's the pod top? This. Turn it over. Uh, and uh, fit top of engine between ribs in pod top. Now the engine, I believe, is in here. So um, we got to start out by opening this sealed bag. Uh, trigger warning everyone, this is opening a vintage factory sealed bag. It's too late to go back now, I just opened it. Uh, so let's pull this stuff out here. Uh, there's the sticker sheet, um, and uh, it's it's a little sticky. Uh, this may have been stored in some heat, and some some of the glue may have melted a little bit, uh, but all the stickers appear to be there. Uh, let's set those aside. 
uh, and let's pull out the uh, missiles and guns on the plastic tree. Uh, we have other parts here, parts of the fin uh, and whatnot. Okay, now it appears that, let me set this aside so it doesn't get in the way, it appears that this is the engine uh, and the engine goes, uh, how does it go? Uh, see that is the back and it goes toward the front uh, let me orient it the way it is in the instructions uh, and it goes like this I see exactly how it goes so that fits in that, those little slots there perfectly we have an engine uh, and then step 1b turn the pod bottom uh, over I guess we're supposed to keep this upside down the pod bottom over um, Fit exhaust tab near rear of pod um, top and snap uh, snap uh, four tabs into place. Make sure rear exhaust is completely closed. Okay, I see. That's the rear exhaust. Let's see. There are, okay, I see the clips. Let's see here. Let's see if we can get these snapped on. Okay, so that is together. Uh, you really gotta make sure these four tabs are snapped into place, uh, but that appears to complete step one. Now step two requires us to open the uh, bag in which the uh, canopy is sealed, and we will have to take the guns off of the plastic tree. So another factory sealed bag bites the dust. There's that piece, uh, and move the plastic out of the way. Uh, there are the guns. Let's snip those off carefully. Uh, looks like that's the best way to do it. Yeah, there we go. Nice, clean cuts. All right. I guess when I do a review of this and you can see the parts close up in HD, then I guess you can decide if you think they're nice clean cuts. Uh, so let's see, um, the hollow side of the gun goes on the inside uh, and this is the top. So it just snaps together on a mushroom clip like, oh, careful now, oh it it's got to be firm with it. But I'm always cautious about being firm with this vintage plastic. Uh, so I'm trying to uh, gently add the force that's needed, but also do it so you can see what I'm doing. So there we go. Guns are on, and they kind of pivot upward like that. Okay. Uh, so uh, the next step is, oh, I guess the guns have a left and right uh, mark on them. Uh, I didn't look at that, but uh, based on the diagram, that is correct and how it goes. So uh, the left is on the left one, the right is on the right one. So now we put the canopy on like, like really carefully. This is one of those uh, clips that's got like three teeth on it, and so you got to be careful not to break any of those teeth off, otherwise it will not work at all. And this is going to require some caution. Oh, okay, all right, it's supposed to go up like this. That's the thinner angle, and snap it on. Okay, guys, I had to pause the video just for a minute because the plastic clips for the canopy just were not giving enough to allow me to put the canopy on, and I did not want to break them, so I used an old trick using a hot hair dryer uh, to soften the plastic, uh, just blow hot air on it for maybe 30 seconds, softens it just enough, and now uh, the canopy fits on there just fine. Um, and it even closes uh, like that, no problem at all. Uh, but yeah, if I hadn't done that, I did worry about breaking those plastic tabs. Okay, step three says uh, turn main wing uh, upside down. This is the main wing, uh, and this is the part that is discolored. Um, if you can compare those colors, you can see what I mean. 
Um, there is significant yellowing on this part. Uh, it almost looks sun damaged. I don't know that it was actually left out in the sun or not. Uh, these kind of light blue parts do tend to yellow on their own over time, but um, exposure to sunlight uh, and sometimes to heat will accelerate that process, uh, and that seems to have happened with this. Uh, so I will eventually replace this part, but I'm going to go ahead and assemble this for now um, because this will uh, this will be absolutely fine for our purposes today. Um, so it says the uh, I need the control panel, which is apparently this. Uh, I guess that's a control panel. I'm supposed to turn this upside down. Um, and then okay, and slide the exhaust into uh, main panel uh, into holes in wing as shown. So this is the exhaust. Uh, it seems to go like this, um, and it fits um, in here. Oh yeah, like that. Does it snap into place? Um, it looks like maybe it just wedges into place. It's hard to tell. Let's see here. Again, we are not wanting to break anything. We want to be gentle with the old toys. Um, oh, there we go. Oh, that was easy. That was easy. Okay. Uh, that part. And then, um, let's see. Okay, snap tabs on control panel into holes as shown. Uh, this is the control panel. And uh, let's see. It goes this way. Snap into holes as shown. Uh, make sure I'm orienting that right. Correct. As long as the diagram is correct, then I am doing it the right way. Okay. Uh, into holes. This black plastic is a little more flexible. Not quite as worried about that. Is that actually snapped in? Almost. Uh, let's be careful with it. There we go. Snap one. Uh, oh. There we go. Almost, almost. You gotta make sure it's snapped into place. Uh, I'm not worried about the black plastic at all. I'm more worried about the uh, gray plastic that's discolored because this discolored plastic uh, does seem to also be more brittle than the, uh, the plastic that's not discolored. So that is that. Okay, turn wing right side up, slide uh, tab on rudder wing um, into notch on main wing and snap into place. So it goes how? It goes, let me see. Okay, I think I see how it goes. Okay, I see, I see how it goes. Once again, um, I'm gonna be a little bit cautious with the old plastic. Uh, the black plastic seems to be more on the uh, softer, bendier side. There, oh, it just perfect. Snapped right into place, okay. That part is done, um, and I hope you don't feel like I'm being too rough with the plastic. I can assure you I am being as gentle as I can while still making sure that it gets assembled. So step four is basically to attach the one-man glider to the, uh, the submarine part of the Sea Ray. And the way it says to do it is to hook these hooks on that bar and then snap it into place. But this is getting awfully scary. Uh, and I'm concerned about, once again, breaking the plastic. Um, and so I may have to do the blow dryer trick again, which means I may need to pause the video again. Okay, that did not work. Uh, and I am not going to break this vehicle to get it assembled. I just simply will not. Um, and so I am going to eventually replace this part anyway uh, to get one that's not discolored uh, but so I'm, I'm gonna stop there uh, I have a feeling that if I keep going um, I, I will just damage the vehicle beyond repair so let's not do that let's move on let's put the other bits on uh, we will keep the two halves separate for now um, and um, we can still put the stickers on which is always my favorite part all right there's the engine cover uh, the engine cover goes with the tab toward the front so it goes on like this, like that. Engine cover, nice. Now we've got to cut all the missiles off. There are eight missiles. 
so let's nip them off. After that, I believe we will be about ready to put the stickers on. Um, and that, that is my moment of zen. Uh, the uh, placement of the stickers, which I always enjoy. And I hope you do too. So thank you for joining me for this vintage vehicle assembly, or at least partial assembly. And as soon as I figure out how to make that thing fit on. Um, it may, it's possible that maybe I uh, haven't completely uh, assembled this as well as it should be, so it's um, not, um, it's not fitting in the space where it's supposed to. That's possible. I don't think so, though. As I look at it, the tabs appear to be completely um, uh, where they're supposed to be. They're all the way in, so I will work on that, but I don't want it to hold up our project here. So let's move on. All right, uh, all missiles have been removed, and let's go ahead and place them on the vehicle. Most of them go on this uh, one-man glider, uh, just your standard basic G.I. Joe missiles with the dumbbell-shaped pegs, so they slide on there and hold pretty firmly. Uh, nice color choice. Uh, to offset the uh, gray, um, but they are all the same. Uh, there's no differentiation between the missiles on the one-man glider and the missiles on the submarine. That's fine, I guess. Uh, I guess that gives it, when it's assembled, when it's all together, it gives, a, gives it a uniformity. Uh, there we go. So those missiles on. Two missiles go on here. One on each side. All right, there we go. And now, now we're uh, ready to put stickers on. All right, let's start with the stickers on the glider part first. Um, let's see, man, the print on that is tiny. My eyeballs aren't as good as they used to be. It looks like 10 goes on the wings, but how does that go? Uh, let's see. Uh, Alright, okay, I, I see. On this side, uh, let me make sure I'm doing that right. Hold on. Yeah, okay, on the underside, it goes in these spaces, and it goes uh, with the Cobra emblem facing out, or with the head toward the inside, I should say. All right, let's get these guys off and get them placed. All right, there's number 10. They are not wanting to release from the sheet very easily, but we got them. We got them, there we go. Uh, stickers may require a little bit of cleanup, but that's okay. Uh, let's place them where they belong. I don't know if you can hear that. We have a thunderstorm going here as I'm recording this. Um, so I am super relaxed right now. You want to talk about Zen? Uh, it's perfect. Thunderstorm. Kind of a peaceful day. Quiet. Uh, and we get to assemble a G.I. Joe vehicle and put the stickers on. Uh, and this one has... Not been the easiest to assemble, but that's okay. Because we have to accept challenges when we are faced with them. So this one was a challenge. Um, but not too big a challenge. It's not nearly as big a challenge as the Star Brigade Invader. There we go. So, those stickers on. Okay, next, um, let's see, some smaller stickers are supposed to go on the underside of the back fins. Which ones are those? Number two? Number two. Yeah, I almost need a magnifying glass to see the instructions. They are printed in very tiny print. But these two 
white cobra emblems go, let's see, yeah, right there. That's a lovely thunderstorm. That's nice. I don't know if you can hear that, but it's fairly loud here. All right, and the other number two sticker goes on the other side. There we go. Having to work this a little bit to get an edge on it so I can pull them up. Ooh, careful now. Okay. There we go. Uh, sometimes I get comments from people who don't like the way I assemble these G.I. Joe vehicles out of the box. And to those people, I strongly encourage you to get your own. That way you can assemble it any way you want to. Uh, I wouldn't stop you, and I certainly wouldn't criticize you for that. Um, okay, now, let's see. These radar stickers, number eight. That one goes on this side. Well, they look they're like they're the same size, so you, so you could put them on either side, I guess, number eight and number nine. Could go on either side, but we are going to put it this way. Let's see, with what orientation? Looks like, looks like that. Okay, there. And sticker number nine, the other radar sticker, which goes on the other radar screen. And with what orientation? There we go. Whew. The sticker sheet does not want to give up the stickers, but we're going to make it work anyway. Okay. What orientation? It looks like, looks like that. There's a grid on these and so it does give you some clue as to how they should be oriented. All right. Okay. Uh, now we've got sticker number uh, seven. Where is ah? There's seven and that goes where? That goes. I don't understand what it's telling me. All right. Yeah. That goes, oh, okay, I see. It goes um, on here. Got it. So we have two number seven, number seven stickers. All right. And if you are in any way dissatisfied with how I'm doing this, complaining is always free. So it costs you nothing to complain in the comments. Uh, let's see. There we go. There's that one. And, and I can already tell I did that wrong. Let's see if it will let me, yeah, oh yeah, I can peel it right back up. No problem, no problem, because these actually need to go the other way because I've got it bottom side up now. And if I put it on this way, you can read it right side up when I flip it. There, like that, like that. There we go. The other number seven. Go ahead and cheer along at home. You know, I, I appreciate it. I can hear you through the camera. So, so let's hear it everyone. Let's make some noise. Okay, I gotta flip that over. Um, I, I do admit that in my uh, personal work life, I've had some frustrations lately, uh, and it's got to me a little bit. Been a little bit down about it, but uh, Mike Lopez, a friend of the channel, uh, did a very kind thing, and he sent me something with stickers to put on. So um, that uh, actually helps probably more than you would think. Um, I think we have done the stickers for that side of it. Let's flip it over, and let's find the stickers that go on this side of it. 
Uh, it looks like we have some small Cobra emblems in red. Uh, sticker number one, there are two of them. All right. I hope you guys enjoyed Cobra Convergence 3 this year. Uh, I thought it was fun. I enjoyed everyone who uh, participated, and thank you for those of you who created your own Cobra stuff. Uh, I hope you were happy with your appearance in the montages. Um, it actually, uh, to me, I thought it went even better than I expected. I had more of a response than I expected, so uh, I hope you all enjoyed that. And I hope everybody uh, can see that there are plenty of people in your community out there that are creating really cool things. Next, number one sticker. All right. As you may know, I'm a completist, which means that I'm trying to get every vintage G.I. Joe toy, uh, U.S. domestic release from 1982 to 1994 and review it on this channel. And by doing that, in a way, I uh, give these back to the community. I, I share them. Even though they are in my collection, I enjoy having them in my collection. Uh, making videos about them gives me an opportunity to uh, do more than just put them on a shelf. It gives me an opportunity to share them. Um, and sharing is, uh, to me, the most fun part of collecting. Uh, after all, I could just buy things and put them away where nobody could enjoy them. Uh, and certainly if that's what you want to do with your collection, that's absolutely fine. Uh, however, that's not my preference. I prefer sharing with all of you, which is why I'm doing this right now. I could have simply assembled this uh, all by myself in a quiet room uh, and uh, enjoyed that. Might have showed you the finer, final uh, product, but this allows us to assemble it together. There we go. Um, I think we have completed, no, not yet, almost completed the stickers on the glider section, uh, but there are Sea Ray stickers, which are number 15 or 16. Um, let's see, 15, okay, here we go. Oh, we got a, okay, we got a 15 and a 16. They're almost the same, but I guess they're reversed. All right, 15 goes on this side. Where's 15? There's 15. I, uh, as I review these, I will always tell you what I honestly think about them. I do not require agreement. You do not have to agree. Uh, I hope that disagreement does not result in you not watching the videos anymore. But if it does, I understand. I will still be making videos in which I express my opinion about things. And I fully understand that that will not be everyone's cup of tea. Um, I fully understand that I might indeed be more popular if I just kind of went with the flow and agreed with uh, agreed with everybody else's opinion and refrained from expressing my own. After all, um, expressing any opinion at all, either favorable or unfavorable, puts you at odds with some people. Some people just are not going to agree and are not going to like being disagreed with. Um, and if that's you, I, uh, I can't help you. You're going to have a tough time, if that's your attitude. Not with me. I'm not your problem. You will have a hard time with uh, life and the internet in general. So, um, so 
my suggestion is to do what I have done and learn to live with disagreement. Uh, discuss, debate, be open to persuasion, but um, to demand agreement from other people is uh, not likely to be successful. Okay, what next? Now we can assemble or put the stickers on the submarine portion. Uh, and we've got a lot of kind of the same stickers. Let's see here. Um, we've got, okay, facing this way, uh, number 14, which is, where's 14? There's 14. Oh, they're tiny. Number 14 goes where? Mm, oh, it goes on the on the engine cover. Well, it has to be tiny to fit on that engine cover. That's going to be tough to get off. Uh, the um, This apparently was exposed to some heat, and some of the glue has kind of melted and sort of overlapped to the front side of the sticker sheet, which uh, is making them a little bit difficult to peel off. And these go there. Um, the image on the back of the box is actually helping a little bit. Like that. Excellent. Other side, same thing. All right. I don't know, every once in a while people get really disagreeable, um, really vocal, they seem to feel personally attacked because somebody on the internet doesn't agree with them. Well, that's not really fair. And I try not to take any shots at any person. And I'll talk smack about plastic all day long. Plastic doesn't have feelings. Um, but I try not to... Um, I try not to attack people, ever. And if you will notice in my videos, especially my really negative ranty videos, I do try to, in each of those, remind everyone that you can and should always think what you want to think about any of these things, you should keep your opinion if you are not persuaded, um, if you feel like you have better reasons, uh, you should um, go on thinking what you think and I should not change your mind. I'm not really trying to change your mind, so if I don't change your mind that's perfectly fine with me. All right, number four. But I too do occasionally see some G.I. Joe fans who um, perhaps in the interest of defending what they like uh, take some shots at, at other fans. And I don't agree with that. I don't think that's a good way to treat your your other members of your community. So keep that in mind. The plastic is just plastic. But I don't tell other people how to collect. I don't tell other people what they should like. Uh, and if they disagree with me, I don't tell people that they should change their mind. I would not insult you in that way. I believe that you are all intelligent people and capable of making your own decisions and assessing things for yourself. But then, so am I. I am capable of assessing things for myself, and I will, 
and as I uh, form opinions, I will express them on this channel. Uncensored. All right. This goes here. There we go. These pivot stickers. All right. We are making progress, but there's actually a lot of stickers that go on here. Uh, and that's good because it needs a little bit of color. Um, I mean, it's got uh, the gray, the black, and the kind of sort of pinkish red. And so it has some color, but it does have, it does have a lot of that blue-gray, um, which is fine. It's just it's a lot of it. Uh, so breaking up some of that blue-gray with... Um, with some stickers, some, some color, uh, is actually a really good idea. Okay. Let's see. No, doing that wrong. Did I place the other one wrong, too? I better check the other side. Is that going to interfere? Yeah, it will. All right. Well, I can... These vinyl stickers are so forgiving. If you're careful, you can pull them up and re position them, which the paper stickers do not allow you to do. Once they are on there, it's like cement. So it's nice to have these vinyl stickers to work with. Okay, what next? Caution. The caution stickers, uh, let's see, number 12. Where do they go? They go right about there. Uh, and I'm sorry if, uh, if this is boring to you. This will probably be a pretty long video of me rambling, and so it's probably one of those videos that will not get a lot of views, and some of the people who view it will give it a big fat thumbs down. And that's okay. I really don't pay attention to the down votes, the thumbs down. I don't really pay attention to them at all. I don't know why I would. Uh, I've been very fortunate that uh, there have been um, people who enjoy my videos. And I'd rather pay attention to them. I'll give them my attention uh, and my appreciation. And if anybody doesn't like it, well, perhaps they will move on and find something they do like. Okay, caution sticker, there, okay, and these, okay, number six, these uh, letters, there we go. I've had to really practice letting things go lately. Um, because there, there has been a bit of negativity about, no denying that. Um, but if you put things in perspective, you know, there's a bit of negativity, but there's a lot of positive things going on right now. Positive things in this channel, positive things in my personal life. Um, so you, you just kind of make sure you keep your perspective Negativity can color things so you don't see them clearly. There we go. All right, uh, looks like we have four more stickers, uh, some big sea um, ray emblems, and then a couple cobra emblems to put on. Uh, let's see, we have a sticker number 17 and a sticker number 18. So. Uh, let's see, sticker number 18 goes on this side, that one right there. We're almost done, folks. Uh, with this part, oh, uh, we still have to open the figure. So this may indeed be a long video, but that's okay. We're going to be fine. Okay, 18 goes on, it goes on this side. So that's strange, though, because it looks like it's reversed from what's shown on the sticker sheet. And what's shown, well, no, on the box it is like this, I think. Let's see. That's interesting. 
Um, let's see. See, it would be reverse of that. Let me see. It says 18 on this side and 17 on this side, but I think that's wrong. It is wrong. Okay, I'm going to do it the way it should be done, not the way the sticker sheet shows, because if I do it that way, then it will match the, um, the direction that's on the, the wing part. So I'm gonna do it the right way. Uh, once again, the sticker sheet is not 100% accurate. Okay, so that should go on that side. This should go on, well, come on now. Uh, that sticker sheet doesn't want to give them up. There we go. This will go here. Let's see. Yes. Like that. Now we've got the symmetry from the front end to the back end of these C-Ray logos. Uh, and now, two Cobra emblems and we are done. With the stickers at least. Okay, come on. Give it up. Peel off. Okay. There we go. All right, and they are pretty simple. They go on the sides. Right about. Let's try to get them straight. Right about there. Okay. There's one. Last one. There we go. We are done. Okay, now it's time to take the figure off his blister. Let's see if we can pop it off the cardboard here. There we go. One end, and it's kind of... Oh, wow. <laughs> All right, his gun fell out, so um, we got that. There we go. It's kind of glued on the back. Uh, but there is the sea slug, and let's go ahead and take him off of this. Um, yeah, there, there is his his little gun. Um, let's do this carefully. Um, I feel like slicing the plastic like this, maybe on three sides without touching the figure, I'm not going to touch the figure with that blade, I'm not even going to get close to it. I'm going to only cut the plastic. Actually, that's enough, I think. I think that's all I needed to do. I don't need to do any more than necessary because I do not want to scratch the figure. And there he is, the sea slug. First time ever being brought out of the sealed uh, blister, and there he is. Never before touched by human hands. Um, there we go. Uh, so there we go, and there's his gun, and that really is everything. That was my unboxing and assembly, partial assembly, of the Cobra Sea Ray and the Sea Slug. I hope you enjoyed it. Didn't quite get those pieces to fit together, but uh, I will make sure I uh, get it to work before I do a full review on it. Uh, thank you again to Mike Lopez. Uh, you gave me a project to work on at a time when I really needed one, uh, so I can't thank you enough for that. Uh, just really needed that sort of moment of zen and did very much enjoy putting the stickers on the Sea Ray. Uh, so thank you again. Uh, it's absolutely invaluable to me. Um, and thank you everyone for watching. Thank you for being part of this channel. Uh, I hope that you will stick around. We will have more full vintage G.I. Joe toy reviews coming up. Uh, but I thought this might be something uh, for you guys to watch uh, while I'm taking the weekend off. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy to uh, have this uh, with the box and the file card on the box and uh, the figure, you know, absolutely mint. Uh, and of course, uh, one piece to replace here, but otherwise, uh, the uh, the Sea Ray is totally mint, so I'm very happy. Uh, so I'll see you guys next week with a full vintage G.I. Joe toy review. Already working on it, so I hope you enjoy it. I'll see you all then.